It's not a cultist. It's not a trickster. It's not an elementalist. It is a cold dot champion. I think this is the best version of cold dot right now. Bar maybe hierophant and maybe elementalist. Um, but this is much faster than both of those and offers far better defenses and is much better suited than for the upcoming mayhem event. It's not particularly different than other cold dot iterations, but it does leverage auras far more because of champions aura scaling and obviously uses a very very different tree. But this tree also helps us much more easily get to things like suppression cap, max res while still getting a lot of AoE, ailment immunity, and tons of damage. As for why I picked Champion, I think it's basically at worst the second best ascendancy for a lot of skills in the game, because you get the baseline Fortify, which you don't otherwise get easy access to, a ton of aura effect scaling, and permanent adrenaline, which is actually very, very powerful in a mapping focused event. The ascendancy itself at a baseline roughly gives me about 30% more damage, but I'm also able to run one more offensive aura, giving me about 33% more damage, resulting in roughly 65% more damage from the ascendancy alone. That's ignoring all the defensive benefits from having really, really well scaled auras, determination, baseline mitigation from the small nodes, and fortify. More than this, I think it's a build that can both map quickly and potentially challenge your bosses when you get bored of leveling during the event and want to do some harder content. As a caveat though, this is set up for SSF, so SF Software, SF Hardcore, whatever it is. In either case, you don't want to die in an XP event. In Trade League, you have much different options. And I will say one thing about this build. Do not play it if you don't know how to level. It is extremely painful to level because the early tree doesn't take a lot of damage. As soon as you hit normal lab, everything's okay because of first strike last to fall and permanent adrenaline. But prior to that, you're really gonna struggle in my opinion even using Spectral Helix. On average, I'm about 10 minutes slower using this tree with Helix versus, you know, an optimized leveling Helix tree. So it's not the end of the world, but you will have to exercise more caution, especially given the danger of the early Mayhem mods. So before I get into anything for the build, let's talk about leveling. It's really, really painful because I don't take any damage nodes until I get down to Bannerman, which gives you 30% increased attack damage. I feel like this is okay because of how strong Splitting Steel and Helix are in the early game. Um, and right after, you get to take the Mastery, and because you're running Vitality, Clarity, and Precision, this is 24% increased damage right away. Into Act 2, Act 3, you're going for Iron Grip, grabbing some Resist Nodes to make things a little bit nicer. You might go for Constitution and a 50%, 50 Flat Life Mastery, um, but the rest of it is just Travel. As you get into Act 5 and Normal Lab, everything starts to feel way better. As soon as you have First Strike Last to Fall, you get to put on Corrupting Fever um, for permanent Adrenaline procs, and this just gives you enough damage and speed to clear pretty much the whole game. And this is what I believe the tree that you need, and you don't really need more than this, to get up to roughly Blood Aqueducts. All the nodes after here, until you go into Cold Dot as your respec, are pretty much just travel nodes, life nodes, or things that just don't impact your build when you're playing Helix at all. The early leveling will be hard. It takes me roughly 10 minutes longer to finish Act 5 than I would with a regular optimized Duelist tree, but it is what it is. I think it's worth doing. It's just 10 minutes. As I get into the BA respec, one thing to note is that I do value Arcane Expanse. It's not mandatory, but I think that having AoE feels really good, especially when using Vol, Cold Snap, and Vortex. Sort of having that mix of, you know, an Auto Bomber slash RF play style, having that AoE really helps out. Let's talk about the endgame tree right away. I'm taking three different aura clusters, the Champion of the Cause aura cluster, Charisma, and also Influence. This is a pseudo aura stacker. I'm running four big ass auras on this build. It's just really good when you're a champion. I'm um, taking a bunch of max res here. There is some amount of res. You can drop these nodes if you end up having enough all res um, from your gear and whatever it is. Iron will tends to be pretty solid, but not mandatory. I think this is roughly yeah 6.4% DPS, so good, but not amazing. Um, I do like entropy a lot, and I do really like having skill effect duration because this makes your ball cold snap last longer, which really speeds up your mapping. Go up to here. Lethe Shade is up if you want. The only thing that will kill you with this is poison, so just log out for poisons. Um, or you can take the poison small pantheon if you're ailment immune, which is enabled partly by Arcane Sanctuary and also on your gear. I'm taking the AoE cluster here. Otherwise, there's a lot of travel, suppression, you know, a lot of attributes on this tree, so you don't need to get any on your gear. Some amount of damage, but really champion just carries everything. Gearwise, all rare gear, one unique item is Devouring Diadem. Target farmable, run you on your Atlas, very easy. I've set up this gear to be SF Hardcore, maybe SF Softcore, you know, basically the same league if you're talking about an XP race, because you really don't want to die. There's a bunch of offensive mods. Um, one thing I would note, though, is this ring is actually really underrated. When you're scaling that much non-damaging ailment effect on my gear, you know, my Amulet, Ash Frost Storm, um, this shock becomes extremely powerful, and so does Scorched Ground. And these are two really powerful offensive mods I'd be looking to get almost ASAP. In fact, I'd probably value getting the Scorch Crown more than I would, say, getting Cold Exposure if you're firing for Icarus early. Otherwise, it's fairly flexible gear. You do want to run a double onset. 
Um, just lets you run all the auras that you want to run. Speaking of, this is my aura list. I'm running Determine Malev, a Zeltry, and a max level Vitality because you can, and because Champion really doesn't have that much recovery at a baseline, but Vitality gets you there. Divine Spanner is also in here as sort of my last aura, and Hatred is my Divine Blessing aura. So you can see I'm running a big list of auras, right? This is four 50% auras, a max level flat, and then still having a banner. The biggest thing is that it takes up a lot of gem sockets. It is what it is. In my main six link, I'm running Vortex and Creeping Frost. These are damage things. In my gloves, I'm running Vol Cold Snap, and this is also linked to Bone Chill, so it scales your other damage. Um, your gloves, you probably want to horror craft with an Essence of Horror um, to get 30% more damage with socketed gems, but it's not mandatory. I currently play without it. It's fine. CWDT Molten Shell. You could also self cast Molten Shell. One of the nice things about this build is because you have a lot of skill effect duration on the tree, Molten Shell lasts quite a long time. Corrupting Fever is linked to Life Tap, Second Wind, so you can get permanent adrenaline procs. Frostbite is a self cast curse. Just cast it yourself, it's worth doing. Flame Dash in one ring, Shield Charge in the other, and no, I'm not actually using faster attacks linked to this um, because I think Champion is kind of fast enough, right? You have basically permanent frenzy charges while you're mapping. You have permanent adrenaline, which is 25% more attack speed, and you also have 20% more attack speed from Unstoppable Hero. So I think you can kind of skip faster attacks. Ultimately, you're more gated by Vortex's cooldown as far as your clear goes and Vol Cold Snap generation than you are things like, you know, attack speed and cast speed because Champion is just fast as hell. So all in all, a pretty straightforward build, but something that I was a little late to jump on the train. I know Carver Rosku has been playing this for a while, or he was playing Chaos Dot, which is where I started wanting to play it, Cold Dot Champion from. Frankly, Champion is just way too strong. So if you're a more experienced player and get through the leveling on this build, it does more damage than the Trickster, it's tankier than the Elementalist, and it's better than an Occultist in every single way. Choose Champ.